written it and indeed moving book, The Assassinations by Vikram Kapoor. The events following Indira Gandhi's assassination in 1984 have been reported on and written about extensively, but this is one of the first novels to take them as its theme. subject of 84, uh, you first edited an anthology where you had a piece yourself, and now a book of fiction. You know, the what year was when it? my innocence ended, in a way. You know, because, see, I come, my dad was a military officer, and I come from a very, from a family which was very patriotic and believed in India and the whole secular vision of India, which is enshrined in our constitution. But 84 proved that how eminently crackable and flimsy that vision was. And here you were talking about two communities which really had no history of conflict. But something, but the happenings of 84, with just the three days of rioting and Mrs. Gandhi's assassination, I mean, everything that had been built up over years, generations of amity just fell apart in that one time. And I think being a teenager at that particular point in time and just coming of age, it was something that left a deep impression on me as a person. Something which at I home, things were no less chaotic. Kishneet had reacted to the operation with an outbreak of ranting and raving against Mrs. Gandhi. Before long, her anger gave way to paranoia as she imagined all kinds of terrible scenarios for her family. She harangued Amarjeet about his beard exhorting him to shave it off. He had discarded his turban years before. She had panic attacks when someone in the family was late coming home. She found it hard to sleep. Amarjeet put her on a dose of antidepressants and prescribed sleeping pills to help her sleep better. But Kishneet's condition failed to improve. Her appetite waned and she began to lose weight. Her cheeks sank in, her eyes shrank, hemmed in by dark shadows, her face took on a stricken look. Amarjeet cut back on work to spend as much as he could at home. His presence made little difference as Kishneet continued to teeter on the edge of panic. After a while, the worry began to tell on Amarjeet. Normally a patient man, he grew snappy and irritable. For me, looking at 1984, I don't come from, I'm not a Sikh, I don't come from a Sikh background. So, and as I read in the excerpt, for me, the central thing about 84 was how it sowed communal poison in Indian society and between various communities. And that's the basic idea behind writing this novel. And that communal poison is very much there in yes. India today. It's not as uh, one of the things that, just as an aside, one of the things that I get asked about it when I tell people I'm out in house telling people are writing a novel on 84, the first question they ask me is, are you a Sikh? You know, which is, uh, which is quite revealing, you know, in one way that it tells us how sectarian we have become, that if you care, if you care about 84, one, you're supposed to be a Sikh. And, uh, and as far as the details and nuances of 84 are concerned, Nobody knows very much, you know, about it. And where it stands today is very scary because, you know, since I am, since my day job is in education, I run across tons of people, or young people, who know absolutely nothing about 84. And that's not just, not just people in the, people who go to university, students. That's pe anyone under 35 or years of age, for that matter, knows absolutely nothing. And if you don't remember history or value history or do something, <laughs> then
then you do repeat history. So it's not, uh, it's not surprising that as a nation and a society we continue to do it. And, and, that's, and this is the situation in Delhi I'm talking about. I can only imagine how bad it would be over the rest of the country.